Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's 11 o'clock, so it's not like the first time we It should have been. Acolyte today. You want to be the acolyte this morning? Bill, you want to be the acolyte today? Yeah, come on. Good morning, everybody. This is our third service in the last 24 hours. Didn't I see you here last night? You needed a little extra churching up this time, I can tell. It's wonderful to have you today. Merry Christmas. The Lord loves you. Oh, it's wonderful to gather on his day. Day of all days where... God's family gets together to celebrate that great, wonderful birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming. I pray and trust that this service will touch your heart. and You'll leave today better than you entered in, if that's even possible. Today we have lit in our Advent candles, candles of love and hope and joy. And especially today we light the candle of Christ, which reminds us of the purity of Jesus Christ and how he came into the world to bring the light of the gospel of eternal salvation into a world of darkness. Now, by way of announcements this morning, I'll be taking 85 minutes to give announcements today. Well, I'll tell you, I pay a dollar to anybody who can figure out how to not do announcements at church. Come on now, y'all be thinking about that during the day to day. Well, next Sunday now, dear friends, uh, we'll have another 11 o'clock service because that will be New Year's Day. And y'all know what you do on New Year's Eve, don't you? Oh, yeah. Some of you stay out till 8.30. I understand that. <laughs> Big night. We'll have a special service next week. Now, we have ornaments out here. As you leave, pick up an ornament just as a reminder of coming to church this morning, worshiping God. Well, y'all stand up, greet one another, say Merry Christmas. The Lord loves you. Merry Christmas. And what, honey? Merry Christmas. Oh. All right, tell them. All right, Keith. everybody. Why don't you grab a hymn book or look up here on the monitors and let's stand and sing. I've heard the bells on Christmas Day. Peace on earth, good will to men. 
That's very beautiful. Y'all are one great big huge choir. Boy, come on up here now. But y'all got to sit on the front row so I have someone to pick on and tell stories about. Oh, yeah. And by the way, these are the $2 seats up here. So I know. Good morning. It's good to see you. Open up your heart as we collectively pray that wonderful prayer of invocation, invoking the Lord into our presence today as one people. Let's pray. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. The heavens and the earth and all your creation belong to you. We, your people, we love you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Our scripture reading for today is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. You say, what? Now, where'd that come from, Dave? Well, let's find out. The scripture says, Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, and always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and with reverence. Now let's talk about that. I'm doing a series called Journey to Bethlehem. Oh, but this is Christmas morning. Boy, how, how many of y'all already opened your present? Let me see if you early present. Anyone going to open presents later on? This a, ooh, a bunch of you. So what is this Christmas gift that you can be giving to folks? And Peter lays it out. He says, sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart. Sanctify is a very funny word. It simply means set apart. Set aside. Make sure that the most important part of your life is that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. And always be ready to make a defense. Now watch this. To everyone who asks you. So what would y'all go to church for today? Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, he's so wonderful, so good. Well, what, what's so good about God? Oh, I got hope. Well, what is that hope? Oh, I have eternal life. Really? I can live eternally, forever, in a right relationship with God? Oh, absolutely. Now, they tell you how to do this. He says, now make sure you do it with gentleness and reverence. That word gentleness simply means with self-control. 
Well, I don't want you getting out there and beating anybody up with a Bible. I don't want you twisting any arms. Or oh, you're just going about your business, boy, and there's joy in your heart. What is it about you? Oh, the Lord loves me, likes me. Now, I'd like to share with you. Since you asked, I'll just share. See? And I'm going to do it very gently, very, very reverently, very kindly. Because, boy, I tell you, there's so many angry, hurting people out there in the world. They have no hope. And so they're running pillar to post, and they're frustrated, and they're all upset. And they're, wow, what do you know? And they'll ask you these questions and say, well, and then they'll call you a hypocrite. Right? Come on. They know you. And you say, that's right. And there's room for you, too. Come on. We'll accept you, too. No, I'm very loving very tenderly, always tell them about, boy, that, what's inside of you? Well, and that'll make all the difference and we'll evangelize the entire world. What's going on in your life? What's got you befuddled? Come on, what are you struggling with today? Well, I wish I had you in my office and we could all sit down and have another cup this morning. What do you need? What are you so happy about? You're just snapping your suspenders this morning. Whatever is in your heart. The Lord Jesus Christ taught us a great prayer. Oh, it's not one that we just memorize. He says, oh, here's a model prayer. No matter what it is, no matter where you are, no matter, boy, you can pray this prayer, and boy, and I'll tell you, he'll touch you. And he'll meet your need. And he'll give you everything that you've ever wanted. Would you pray now with me that great, wonderful prayer that our Savior Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord. Ushers, would you come forward as we receive the Lord's tithes and our offerings? Isn't he beautiful, beautiful, isn't he? Prince of peace, son of God, isn't he? Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, isn't he? Counselor, almighty God, isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he beautiful, beautiful, isn't he? Prince of peace, son of God, isn't he? Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, isn't he? Counselor, almighty God, isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he beautiful, beautiful, isn't he? Prince of peace, son of God, isn't he? Isn't he?
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Sharon Adams. are going to sing hymn number get it out here 275 sing we now of christmas and we'll do all four verses sing we now of christmas sing we now will hear listen to our praises to the babe so dear sing King is born, Noel. Sing we now of Christmas. Sing we all, Noel. Shepherds on the hillside heard the angels sing. Glory, honor, praises to the infant King. Sing we, Noel. The King is born, Noel. Sing we now of Christmas. Sing we all know well. In the town they found him, son of Mary mild. Sleeping in a manger was the holy child. Sing we know well, the king is born know well. Sing we know of Christmas, sing we all know well. Wise men sought and found him, treasures did they Now you all settle back now. If you're sitting next to a good looking big strong man now, you put your arm around her, let her nestle in right there. That means when that big man starts to go to sleep, you can do this, ladies, right here. Right there. <laughs> Sharing the gospel of Christmas is the message for today. Now serious. What are y'all going to do this afternoon? What are you going to do tomorrow? Anybody have a day off tomorrow? What are you going to do on Tuesday? Well, it seems like we do all this big hubbub business up to Christmas, and then we just drop it, don't we? How long do you leave your Christmas lights up, you know? Three Kings Day? You know, Joseph and Mary... They had to deal with that, too. I'm going to say last night, boy, they gave birth to this little baby. Now, Mary wasn't alone. There's an entourage. A whole bunch of Joseph and Mary's family had to go down to Bethlehem. Well, there's no place to stay, so they're staying in this little kind of cave, a limestone cave, and they, somebody made a stable out of it. It's wintertime. It's a little chilly. You can get down into the 30s down in Israel. It's cold, it's damp, and it's dark, and she gives birth to this baby. Joseph gets up early in the morning. He's got things to do. First of all, he's got to go and register for the taxation. Boy, that ought to about break him. Then he has to go and try to find suitable lodging for the family. Not only that, he's got to go up into the temple and he has to make an arrangement to make sure that the baby Jesus gets presented to the Lord so he gets dedicated to God and Mary can go through her purification rituals. Boy, he's got all these things to do on top of that. Why, he's got to look for a job. What did you all think Joseph and Mary did the next day after Christmas? Well, they just sat around in the straw, you know, and... or false. 
for these people. Oh, Mary and Joseph, they don't know what to do. I mean, they see, both of them see an angel back there in Nazareth, and they make this long journey, and she's pregnant, and boy, and I can't. Come on, ladies, how fun is it to ride on a donkey for about 90 miles? Well, and then she gets there, there's no place to, boy, oh, this, well, I don't know what to think. They're dazed. Oh, they're just wore out weary. A little bit of shock. Those shepherds showed up last night. Well, I'm told us they saw angels. Well, we didn't see any angels. They saw them. And well, they saw this heavenly host. And well, they came and they started telling us about our son. And this is this little baby. And Mary's sitting over there. I don't know what. What do you women feel like the next morning after you've given birth? I had no idea. I'm sure you're up dancing and hanging, you know, <laughs> hanging out the laundry. And I don't know. She's just trying to keep herself together, nurse the baby. They're trying to make something out of this makeshift house they've got. They'll be staying there for a little while. I think that's setting the scene for this Joseph and this Mary. They're just wore out, exhausted. Now then, on top of that, several days later, they're going to have to go up to the Temple Mount. Boy, it's busy. Let me give you the setting. What's going on up in the Temple? There are crowds of people all over the Temple, just like a bunch of ants just running around up there. Oh, it's just filled. Well, big taxation, big enrollment. Not only that, well, if I'm here, then we've got to go up here, and all the people have to come to Jerusalem for all the sacrifices. They do sacrifices twice a day. They do prayers twice a day. For all the people, everybody comes up there. It's all crowded and stinky and dirty. And people, come on. There's all these purification washings that are going on around there. On top of that come these special purifications like Mary's. She has to come up. Jesus has to come up and be presented. Boy, there's a whole bunch of babies being dedicated to the Lord. I'm going to tell you. It's noisy. You know, you come from all over the known world, and you have your money, what do you have to do? Well, those people figured it out. I need to figure this out, too. Take all your money, turn it into temple coins. I'll only charge 35% on the dollar. So all they're hassling about money and changing money, priests hustling around, real busy, the people, frustrated, emotions are running high. It's hurly-burly. And Joseph and Mary come up into the court of Israel at this time. They come up to dedicate their baby. Now he's a teeny little thing. Joseph is carrying him. Mary's kind of holding on to his arm. And now they're in Jerusalem. And they're in there, and they're looking around. Now, where do we go, and what do we do? We're just these poor little country people from up in Nazareth way. We don't know what's going on here. Oh, there's a bunch of teaching going on on the side over there. And all these different rabbis yelling and carrying on, let, trying to get everybody to hear what they have to say. And right at that time, this old man, doesn't tell us how old, just says he's an old man. His name is Simeon. He says, Simeon, has been looking for a long time for the Messiah. And something really strange, very interesting. Scripture tells us that the Spirit of God was upon him. Well, that's not so strange. Lord ever asked you to do something? Lord ever moved in your heart saying, I want you to do something very special? I don't know. This man's been up here in this temple for a very long time. And the Holy Spirit had revealed to Simeon, Now, Simeon, while you're up in the temple, be looking, because you will not die until you see the Lord's Messiah, Christ. How would you like to know when you're going to die? Could it be today? Could it be what? How many years from now? He's been looking for a very long time. At this very moment, the Holy Spirit led Simeon up into the temple, Mary and Joseph, they're kind of pushing their way, bumping their way through these crowd of worshipers when Simeon comes up, Scripture says, and takes Jesus out of Joseph's arms. 
Well, I'll tell you, that had to be a struggle. Immediately, he breaks into a prayer, and he starts blessing God. Now, Lord, let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to your word. For I have seen with my own eyes your salvation, which you prepared for all the people. A light of revelation to the Gentiles. Gentiles no more know about the Messiah. Oh, but now he's going to be revealed. And then the glory of your people, Israel, they've been waiting since Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Simeon blesses this little family, gives the baby back, and then he does something very strange. He turns to Mary, and he whispers in Mary's ear, Your child will be appointed for the rise and for the fall of many in Israel, and a sign of opposition against you, Mary. Mary, a sword is going to pierce your own soul to the end. As your heart is broken, many hearts are going to be revealed. He's really talking about the Jewish leadership. They're going to be revealed. Mary, did you know your son would be disgraced and abused by the religious leaders, the Jewish people, the Roman government, and the polytheistic Greeks? Well, not my baby. You remember when you first had a baby? Come on, daddies, look up here. Remember how protective you were? Oh, it's just afraid to hold it. You might break it if you touched it, right? Oh, but boy, I'll tell you, your strength was around that child. After whispering to Mary, Simeon leaves the temple. You know what he goes to do? Prepare for his burial. I gotta have a funeral now. All right, let's start booking funerals. We'll have somebody out here and book your funeral. That's what Simeon did. What a strange encounter. Joseph and Mary, they had to wonder, what's all this mean? Who is this child of ours? Now, meanwhile, back in the temple, there's an old prophetess. Scripture tells me she's 84 years old. And she's one who speaks for God. prophet is somebody who'd get a direct revelation from God. Boy, he did. He told her all the Messiah is going to be here. They take that direct revelation and they indirectly then they give it out to God's people to meet a specific need. And their greatest need that was buzzing around Israel in those days was the fact that the Messiah is coming. And there were so many charlatans and so many fake Messiahs all wanting some kind of worldly, earthly acclaim and well, power. Anna comes up. Scripture says that she never left the temple fasting and praying. She's an amazing woman. She had a ministry of prayer intercession. What do you need today? Oh, Dave, my heart's broken. Oh, Dave, I'm just as happy I could just spit. Oh, what's going on here? Well, there's so much confusion. I don't know whether to do. Well, let me tell you, don't worry about that. I got Anna over here. Oh, she speaks to God and she listens to him. Oh, and she'll intercede for you. Boy, what a fabulous ministry this woman has. Now, this woman, she comes up and she approaches Joseph and Mary. Again, shocked. She begins praising and thanking God. Here's what she says. Anna said, Oh Lord, I praise you and I thank you, for I have seen the Christ child whom you have sent to me. And I'm going to tell all of those who are looking for the Redeemer, Savior of Israel. What an incredible ministry of service. You know, one of the things we're always asking you all to do here at Church by the Sea, would you help us out? Would you volunteer? Would you do this? Would you do that? I'm going to tell you, there is absolutely nothing better than prayer. God works 
in answer to prayer. We have not because we pray not. We pray we don't receive, the Lord says, because we don't believe we're going to get it anyway. Not you, of course. I'm speaking to those people out there, not you. Come on now, I've got to release that tension there just a little bit. Joseph and Mary are amazed at the things that are being said about this child. Who is this child of ours? You've got to remember the Gospels haven't been written. They didn't know this stuff was going to happen. They're making it up as they go along. Joseph and Mary are learning about their child, the Son of God. Joseph and Mary, did you know your child is the Lord of all creation? Joseph and Mary, did you know that your son is the Savior of mankind? Oh, Joseph and Mary, did you know Jesus will give sight to the blind, the deaf will hear, the lame will run, the dumb will speak, and the dead will live again. Joseph and Mary, did you know your son is a sacrificial lamb of God that will take away the sin of the world? Oh, no, Dave. We don't have a clue. Really? Is that what's going to happen? Mary will see it. Joseph won't. He'll die somewhere before Jesus starts his ministry. On this Christmas morning, I have one question that I'm going to ask. As Mary and Joseph are wondering about who is this son of ours, I want to say, who do you say Jesus is? This is the most important question you'll ever have to answer. Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say I am? Why are they talking about you being the Baptist? Or oh, maybe you're Elijah or Jeremiah, come back from the dead. You've got to be a prophet. People have said that you're the rabbi. Oh, rabbi, we know that you're truthful and you teach the way of God. Oh, so what do the people think about Jesus? Oh, he's a good man, religious man, a mystic, a guru. Oh, he's just a good teacher. That's all they think. Then turning to his disciples, especially Peter, he says, who do you say I am? He says, thou art the son of the living God. You are Christ. The heavenly Father has made known exactly who Jesus is. Let me give you two verses. After being baptized, Jesus came up out of the water, and a voice out of heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus took James, Peter, and John, and they went up on the mountain that we call the Mount of Transfiguration. And they said there was a bright cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of that cloud and said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. This is who Jesus said he was. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. I and the Father are one. In this, Jesus is saying, I am Yahweh, Jehovah, Yeshua. I am the God of gods. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Whoever hears my words and believes the Heavenly Father who sent me will be given eternal life. I am the resurrection and the life, and he, she, who believes in me will live even if they die, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. That is the gift of Christmas. The Heavenly Father's gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has only one request, and that's that you share this wonderful gift, the love of Jesus Christ, which is the gospel message. Amen? Amen. All right. Y'all stand up and let's continue to worship the Lord now.
Sharon, what are we going to do? We are going to wrap it up with joy to the world because that's the best Christmas song. Because <laughs> the Savior is born, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> How beautiful, how wonderful to hear you sing this morning. Boy, you got the love of God in your hearts, and we can tell. Would you receive the benediction of the Lord this morning? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be within upon you, especially this wonderful Christmas day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon each and every one of you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. Go in peace. The Lord loves you. Go in peace.